by air, by land, and by sea. All routes lead to this southern city. Beautiful scenery and sunny skies attract many additional residents each year. Unfortunately, this climate is also ideal for one of man's worst enemies, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, carrier of dengue and yellow fever. To combat this menace to the city, an officer of the United States Public Health Service cooperated with the local health department. One of the first steps in the campaign was to discover permanent mosquito breeding places, such as old cisterns, basins, shallow wells, fire barrels, and numerous other containers capable of holding water. Health officials had constantly warned the people of these dangerous conditions and of the way mosquitoes spread to smaller receptacles. After a period devoted to study and surveys, the extent of breeding of the dengue and yellow fever mosquito was determined. A special meeting of health officials set in motion the anti-mosquito campaign. It was decided that a concerted effort would be necessary, enlisting the aid of every source of publicity, together with the organized individual efforts of all the people. With the health of an entire city in jeopardy, the mayor promptly issued a proclamation regarding the urgency of the situation and asked that everyone participate in eliminating the dengue yellow fever mosquito. Newspapers proved particularly valuable in awakening the public to an understanding of their common danger and mutual dependence. Officials of civic organizations assisted the health officers in recruiting leaders and obtaining cooperation from the public through knowledge rather than action enforced by law. Theaters exhibited short films showing methods of control of the dengue and yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti. Teamwork was stimulated in schools as a direct result of the educational programs, which included the showing of motion pictures on mosquitoes, their life habits, and various methods of control. Children are impressed by this method of presentation. Such knowledge acquired by these citizens of tomorrow will be of great influence in the building of healthy, prosperous communities of tomorrow. Progress of the campaign was broadcast daily by local radio stations. This method was most effective in reaching the housewife, the self-appointed guardian of the family welfare, whose cooperation is vital to the success of any health campaign. Instructions and educational material were supplied to the Boy Scouts, since they had volunteered to inspect homes 
and tell the people about the hazard to the city. Districts were set up based on geography and population. As an additional incentive for action, it was decided to give a V Merit Award to cooperating residents. Pamphlets on the Aedes aegypti mosquito were made available for distribution to every home, together with an instruction sheet showing methods of destroying their breeding places, and posters urging definite action. Newspaper publicity gave the necessary day-by-day -day stimulus for a successful campaign. School children were eager to take part in the mosquito control program since they had been so thoroughly informed of its importance. Teachers emphasized the necessity of the campaign by personally distributing literature for the children to take home. Parents were interested and realized the need for eliminating the dengue and yellow fever mosquito. They welcomed instructions on how to get rid of mosquitoes in and around their homes. A call to arms found the Boy Scouts prepared and anxious to undertake their duties. After being instructed by their leader, they started on their way to distribute pamphlets and inspect premises. The scouts greeted housewives in their usual polite manner and consequently received cooperation and assistance. Each scout had received instructions about possible breeding places and was determined to make a thorough inspection of each home. This attitude often stimulated the housewife's concern and careful observation. If it holds water, it will hold mosquito larvae. Another home, another scout, and another housewife. The water in this container is fresh. There are no larvae here, but they could develop within a few days. But let's look in other containers. Ah, here they are. Who would imagine so many larvae in such a small piece of pottery? Any container capable of catching water is a potential mosquito breeding place and should be immediately destroyed or emptied and turned bottoms up. A careful search is necessary to find the hidden containers which provide permanent breeding places. Larvae become mosquitoes. Mosquitoes carry disease. Inside or outside, it makes no difference. Man-made containers, small and large, harbor Aedes aegypti mosquito larvae. Discarded containers of this type should always be given to salvage and garbage collectors without delay. Constant protection of the family health demands constant vigilance. All drinking pans should be emptied and washed at least twice a week. Mosquitoes breed continually and are most prolific, one mosquito being able to lay hundreds of eggs within a single day. After each home had been thoroughly inspected, the cooperative housewife was given a merit award. Display of this award was evidence of her intention to continue keeping her home free from dengue and yellow fever mosquitoes. Informative articles published in the newspapers were effective in making housewives conscious of mosquito breeding places.
The effect of this information was often instantaneous. Horrified? No wonder. Such a small plant and all those wiggle tails in the water. All water plant receptacles in the home should be emptied and scrubbed twice a week. The stems of the plant should be carefully rinsed to remove any remaining mosquito larvae. A simple operation indeed, but only by such precautions can any home be kept free of the disease carrying Aedes aegypti mosquitoes? Since most water plants grow well in soil, it was recommended that where possible the change be made. Potted plants never breed mosquitoes. Girl Scouts were enlisted in the all-out campaign. They discovered and destroyed numerous breeding places, including those in cemeteries. In order to stimulate greater interest in the collection and destruction of mosquito larvae, school children were encouraged to collect the wiggle tails and feed them to minnows. Such action also emphasized the importance of fish as a protective measure. Minnows like these, when placed in garden pools and similar places, eat mosquito larvae. Every section of the city was thoroughly inspected. Vacant lots were found with accumulations of refuse. The scouts punched holes in containers to make sure they would never again be capable of holding water and mosquito larvae. Community cooperation is essential in all health education programs, since cleanup in one area contributes to the welfare of the entire community. Mosquito larvae are often found in unsuspected places, such as old discarded tires containing water. There's just about one efficient way to get water out of these tires. And this is it. After the water is removed from such tires, they should be stored in dry, sheltered locations until salvaged. This man, by cooperating in the campaign, helped protect the health of his family and neighbors, thereby receiving the Merit Award. Thousands of rusty, damaged containers were promptly removed from homes by the city sanitary department. This is one of the most effective methods for the permanent elimination of mosquito breeding places. A brief survey of the huge collection was made by health and sanitary officials before salvaging or destruction. Posters were displayed throughout the city to keep the public ever mindful of the mosquito menace. Store owners contributed window space for unusual exhibits, conveying to the public the danger of mosquito breeding. Various methods of Aedes aegypti control were presented. The display of live mosquitoes and larvae attracted the attention of thousands of people. The larvae-eating minnows impressed many spectators as being an effective way to combat the mosquito hazard. The aroused public attitude assured the success of the anti-mosquito campaign.
You have just observed how one city, awakened to the potential danger of uncontrolled dengue and yellow fever mosquito breeding, and cooperated in an urgent community project. By organizing the entire population of the city, immediate results were obtained and citizens continued the control program to ensure permanent freedom from dengue and yellow fever. Every community has a wealth of resources, but its greatest resource is its people. Capable leaders can develop the power and ability of the people to assure a victorious mosquito control program. It's up to you.